Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with cheese blintzes. That's right, I thought I'd sneak in one more brunch idea before Mother's Day. And this gorgeous cheese stuffed crepe has the four things all great brunch recipes must have. It looks amazing, it tastes great, it's easy, and you can make it ahead of time. And by the way, those last two are very important since there's a very good chance we may be enjoying mimosas and Bloody Marys during the festivities. But anyway, let's go ahead and get started. And first up, we want to make the batter because we need to let this stuff rest about 30 minutes before we start making the crepes. So into a blender, we will add three large eggs along with some whole milk. And just for nostalgia's sake, I'm going to use the old-fashioned kind that comes from a cow. But I'm pretty sure things like almond milk or soy milk would work also. We're also going to need some all-purpose flour and a little bit of sugar, but not too much. I don't like my blintzes too sweet. We're also going to need a little bit of salt as well as some vegetable oil and a splash of water. And then last but not least, a little touch of vanilla. And believe it or not, that is it. So a pretty basic batter. And then what we need to do, as I'm sure you've gathered from the blender, is blend this until completely smooth. And if you don't have a blender, you can totally do this by hand. Or if you have a blender and you just want to show off, you can do this by hand. But it is a heck of a lot easier if you mechanize this step. And by the way, I didn't show it on camera, but I did scrape down and mix in that flour you see stuck to the side. So if that happens to you, you should do the same thing. But anyway, like I said, we're going to blend that until completely smooth. And when you're done, your batter should look something very similar to this. All right, you don't want it too thick. You don't want it too thin. What you want to shoot for is something perfect. And then, as I mentioned earlier, we're just going to let this sit on the counter for 30 minutes before we start making our crepes. And if you're wondering, yes, you can make this ahead and just leave it in the fridge. But since I am going to use mine now, I'm just going to leave it on the counter for 30 minutes while we move on to make the filling. A filling which is going to feature not one, but two kinds of cheese. The first of which would be some ricotta cheese, full fat, none of that low fat stuff, please. And then to that, we'll also add some cream cheese. And just the regular kind will work great. But because I wanted mine a little more fancy, I'm going to use that amazing Italian cream cheese known as mascarpone. Oh, that is some good stuff. And then we're going to add just the tiniest, tiniest pinch of salt, as well as some sugar. And this time we're going to go with the powdered. And again, just like the batter, not too much. Okay, something like this, we want to straddle that line between sweet and savory. So we don't want to overdo it with the sugar. And then because I'm going to serve this with some fresh berries, I decided to add a little bit of lemon zest. And then the only other thing we need in here is one large egg. And then we need to go ahead and mix this up thoroughly. And a great tip here, if you have a few extra minutes to kill, use a spoon, not a whisk. Oh yeah, if you use a whisk, it'll be too fast and easy. So I went with the big spoon and it took me like five minutes. And of course I spent most of that time wishing I'd used a whisk. So do as I say and not as you just saw me do. Use a whisk. It'll be much easier. And then once we get that mixed up, all we're going to do is cover that and keep it in the fridge while we make our crepes. So assuming our batter has now rested at least 30 minutes, we'll head over to the stove where I have a 10-inch non-stick pan set on medium-high heat, which as you saw, we're going to spritz with some vegetable oil. You can also brush it in. And when the pan's hot, we're going to pour in about a quarter cup of the batter. And quickly, as soon as you pour it in, you want to swirl it around, tilt the pan until it coats the bottom, at which point we're just waiting for the crepe to cook which is gonna happen really quick. All right, this is only gonna take you about a minute. And all we're waiting for here is for that surface to become completely dry. So as soon as that surface no longer looks like wet batter, your crepe should be ready to remove from the pan. Okay, traditionally these crepes are only cooked on one side, but breaking with tradition, I do like to flip mine over for just a couple seconds, mostly because I like to play with my food. And it's also gonna let me show you what the other side looks like. So as you can see, it got a little bit golden brown. But anyway, like I said, this is very quick. And as they cook and come out of the pan, you can just pile them up. And from this much batter, you should get about 10 to 12 decent looking crepes. And once we've cooked all our crepes, we're ready to move into final assembly. So let's place one crepe down on our work surface. And then we want to spoon between three and four tablespoons of our filling, about an inch or so from the edge closest to us. At which point we'll fold that side over like this. We'll kind of flatten it out just a little. And then we'll fold in both sides, flip it over like that and just simply roll that into a nice, neat package. And what you really want to try to have happen is for that seam to end up on the bottom, which mine did. So you can watch that part a few times, but it's pretty basic. As long as your sides are tucked in and you end up with a seam on the bottom, it's gonna work. And at this point, if you want, you could wrap these up and pop these in the fridge until you're ready to serve. But you know what? I'm ready to serve. So what we want to do is brown these in some butter over medium heat, and you can use melted butter, but I'm using something called clarified butter now I'll explain what the difference is on the blog post. But like I said, we're going to brown these in butter on both sides before finishing briefly in the oven. So we're going to give those a couple minutes per side. 
or until they're a gorgeous golden brown. I mean, look at those. You're going to want to eat those right at this point, but don't do it. And by the way, be gentle with these. You'll see I kind of dropped this one and a little bit of our cheese filling squirted out and started splattering all over. It ended up not being a problem, but please be gentle anyway. And then once those have been browned on both sides, we're going to carefully transfer those into a lightly buttered baking dish because I think these are much, much better finished in the oven. All right, you can serve them straight from the pan, but if you do that, the filling tends to be a lot runnier and looser. So what I highly recommend is popping these in a 325 degree oven for about 12 minutes, at which point they're going to look pretty much exactly the same, but that filling will have firmed up just a little. And at this point, they are technically ready to serve, but if you can, try to wait 10 minutes. I know you want to eat them now, I don't blame you. But you will get a better flavor and texture if you let them sit a little bit. So I did let mine sit for 10 minutes before plating up, and there are so many incredible ways to serve these. But I'm going to show you my favorite, which includes some freshly made raspberry sauce, which we did a video for not too long ago, so check that out. I'm also going to use some fresh fruit, so I'm going to randomly scatter on some blueberries, as well as carefully hand placing some raspberries. And then I'm going to finish this off with some blackberries, three of the most gigantic blackberries I've ever seen, which once placed gives me the perfect spot to put this sprig of mint. And I know you've heard if something's not used in a dish, you can't use it to garnish with like the mint. Well, you know what? That is technically true. But just like promoting yourself on Twitter, it's only wrong if somebody else does it. And then as brunch tradition would dictate, we will finish this off with a little bit of powdered sugar, but not too much. Okay, a very light dusting is considered elegant and classy, whereas a heavy dusting is considered tacky and gratuitous. So please use a light touch. And at that point, our cheese blintzes with fresh berries is done. And I'm assuming you've had these before, but if you haven't, oh man, are you in for a treat. This is one of the most delicious brunch items ever. We have those beautiful tender crepes and that gorgeous creamy cheesy center with just that touch of sweetness. And of course, both the crepes and the cheese just absolutely perfect with the fresh berries and that berry sauce. I mean, for how easy that crepe batter and that filling is, the results really are spectacular and really a treat for all the senses, except hearing. But you know what? We could take care of that by playing some adult contemporary during the brunch or maybe some of that jazz nobody likes. But anyway, whether you make these for a special occasion brunch or not, I really do hope you give them a try soon. So head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy. Enjoy.